Hey everyone, you're watching Web Dev Junkie. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a Python CLI tool, which basically prints out your horoscope for either today, yesterday, or tomorrow. And if you are a beginner at Python, I suggest you watch this video all the way through because we're going to be seeing a lot of cool, cool things like making HTTP requests. So if you don't know how to make a request to a remote server from Python, definitely check this out. Uh, if you don't know what a horoscope is, basically a horoscope just predicts your kind of like your future for based on like your birth month or birth time frame. Uh, I don't really believe in that stuff, but I thought this would be a good exercise to try out. So let's just go ahead and look at what we have or what this program is going to do. And if you're interested in building this yourself, be sure to pause the video, try to build it, you know, follow through uh, or type, type along as you're watching the video anyway. So this is a kind of a cool little program, right? We have it print out a message. It says, would you like to receive your horoscope for today, yesterday, tomorrow? And you can type in, I don't know, I'll say tomorrow. And then it'll print out a list of all the different signs that you can choose from. And I think my birth year is Capricorn. So if I type that, um, that's going to make a request to an API and give me back my horoscope for tomorrow. And the program ends. You can run this again and type in today or yesterday to get various horoscopes. And I thought this was a pretty little awesome introduction to like doing requests. So I thought it'd be good to make a, a video. And again, if you don't know how to do this stuff, I suggest you watch it. So with all of that being said, let us go ahead and implement this from scratch. So before we dive into actually writing Python code, let's look at this REST API. If you look at this URL, if you were to hit this URL, it provides you back some JSON with some other URLs that you can hit to get more information. So for example, you can get a list of all the different uh, horoscope signs. So if I click this, it'll actually do another request and give me an array of the different signs I can use. And you saw that in the introduction of this video where I printed out, please pick a sign. So we're first gonna be doing a request to this endpoint to get all the signs. And then secondly, we are gonna make a request to either today, tomorrow, or yesterday based on the sign that the user types in and the time frame, I guess, that the user types in. If you don't know what JSON is in REST, I suggest you, uh, I think I have a different video that might explain that stuff, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just a, a structure of data that you can kind of parse through and get data and pass it between a client and a server or server to server, et cetera. Um, and secondly, we are gonna be using a module for Python called requests. There might be a way to do this with the standard lib in Python. I don't know because I'm a noob, but if you have a suggestion or a different library I could use for making requests, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. But for right now, this this library works pretty well, so I highly suggest you check it out. Um, yeah, I think that's the background information you might need to know to get started with this. Let's go ahead and build up a Python project and start using this stuff. So if I go to my VS Code editor, I have a blank folder with a gignore, and I want to set up a Python 3 po project. So what you can do is you can say Python 3-m, v, env, env, and that'll kind of set up an isolated environment for you. And I'll go ahead and click yes to that. And this is basically so when I install that requests library, it's kind of isolated to this folder instead of my, my actual like global system. So when that is done, I could just go ahead and do source env, activate and that will kind of set up my terminal to be using that python library that's inside of env um, and then you may have to also do a select interpreter so if you do command shift p on mac in vs code you can do select interpreter and just verify that it autom autom automatically selected this one down here so you see it's dot slash env bin python that's pointing to this one right here which we are going to need anyway so that's kind of some you know pre-setup you have to do but again, we're using a project called requests, and I don't know if they tell you how to install it, so I'm just going to tell you how to do it. Actually, it says right here, installation. You could do pip env install, but what I'm doing here, I'm just going to say pip install, and then requests. And that's going to go ahead and fetch that package and all the other sub-dependencies that are probably needed for that package. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna do a pip freeze into a requirements. Did I spell it right? Let's see, requirements.txt. And that basically just tells me and locks uh, locks down all the different 
packages you might need to use. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let's make a source folder. Let's make a main.py file. And inside of here, this is where we need to start doing some of that logic. So starting off, let's go ahead and import requests. And then that will give us access to doing some HTTP requests. Um, and just to kind of test that out, what we can do is try to make a request to this URL and see if it works. So I'll say response equals requests dot git. And I can actually pass it that full URL. Oops, let's pass it that. And I believe you could just do dot JSON at the end of that. If you look at the library here, I'm sure they explain that you can do dot JSON to get the actual JSON representation. And I'll just go ahead and print out what the response is. In fact, let me just name this signs. So if we didn't screw up anything, we can run this. And notice that it prints out in a list of all the different signs. And that's pretty much the same thing that happened here. When I clicked on this link, we get a list of signs. But now that we can actually use it in our program. So let us first do that first part of that introduction where we print out all the signs and I tell you to select one. So I'm going to say print. And let's just prompt the user with some type of, um, let's see, please select a following sign. And if we run this, this would print out that string. And what we want to do is we want to loop through every sign and print them out one by one in a nice format. So if you know how to do a for loop in Python, you could say for sign in signs. And that'll loop over every sign one by one. And then for each one, I could just print out a formatted string and I'll say, um, add a couple spaces and then I will do sign. Okay, so now if I run this, it's gonna ask me if I wanna auto format with Python. I'm going to say, use black. I'll give this a second to run. I, I highly suggest using a linter like black or what other that the other one was it really makes your code cleaner and easier to understand but let's see give this a second to run all right so that is done installing i'm gonna go ahead and click run up here and that will say please select a following sign it'll print out all the signs you can choose from and then the program ends so we're making some progress but Obviously, we want to fetch some input from the user, right? So they need to be able to type in what their sign is, and then we can further make another request to the API. So another useful method in Python is input, and you can call it and pass it a string, and it'll prompt the user to select the sign. So I'm just going to say selected sign. I'll declare a variable called selected sign, and that is going to be equal to the output of the input function. <laughs> output and input, kind of confusing. Uh, and I'll just say select your sign. And I'll tack on a new line at the end of that just so it looks a little bit better. So I'll rerun that. And now that you'll see that it says select your sign, I can type in Capricorn, enter. And now this should be equal to Capricorn. So if we just trust that it is, we can move on to the next step, which is fetching the horoscope, right? So if you go back to your... API, which was this, we have three different ways to fetch a horoscope. You could do today, tomorrow, or yesterday. Just for the sake of where we're at in this tutorial, let's just grab today's. So we can make another request to that today API. So I'll say a horoscope variable is equal to request.git, pass in that URL. Um, but notice that we do need to put in the sun sign which is going to be this, right? So I'm going to do a formatted string and I'm going to pass it selected sign. And now I should be able to print out what the horoscope was. So save this, rerun this. I'll type in cancer. I'll get back a response 200 because we forgot to do dot uh, JSON. So a little thing I didn't mention is when you make that request, it's going to give you back an object that has like a status code, headers, encoding, text, or whatever. And sometimes you do need to check the status code to make sure it's a 200 or if it's a 403 unauthorized or 401, whatever. But in this particular case, we're keeping it simple. 
we just want to grab the JSON object, right? So we need to make sure we call JSON and that will return a dictionary where we can actually access um, some different things that are related to our horoscope. So let me save this and rerun this and we can type in a sign again and notice we get back this object, right? This dictionary JSON object, which has um, some different stuff in it. It's kind of hard to read in the terminal. So if I go to like a JSON viewer, I could paste that into a JSON viewer or I could just go to the URL itself. I have a plugin installed in Chrome that'll kind of format my JSON for me, but uh, this is taking a while to load, man. Uh, let's just go to, that's done, okay. So I'll format that. And notice that the dictionary or the JSON object we get back has different keys in it, right? The key that we're interested in would be this one, right? Horoscope. So in our code, since this is a Python dictionary, we can just access our horoscope by doing horoscope. So it's kind of confusing that we have horoscope and then a key of horoscope. So I'm, I might say um, horoscope JSON instead. Dick dictionary, horoscope dictionary. I don't know if that helps it makes more sense or not, but it just kind of denotes that this is not just string this is like an actual like dictionary of things but um yeah let's just go go ahead and print out a new line here just to make it a little bit more formatted and let's rerun it so let's try i'll do capricorn again select your sign and it printed out what my sign is so that was pretty easy right we imported a library called requests we were able to make some requests to an api um but now we actually want to be able to select today, tomorrow, or yesterday. So one thing I suggest doing is, you know, I'll show, the, I'll show you that later. Let's, let's start with asking the user, do you want a horoscope for today, tomorrow, or yesterday? So I'll say time frame is equal to input of do you want your horoscope for today, tomorrow, or yesterday? I should probably type or. Oops. Okay. So today, tomorrow, or yesterday. Any typos? Capital O there. Okay. So now we actually have a time frame, right? So we can use that time frame. And make sure you always append a new line or it just looks kind of funky when you're asking the input and it's on the same line. So we can ask them if you want today, tomorrow, or yesterday. And we can now use that time frame over here. So instead of saying today and have that hard coded, the user can now actually provide like what time frame they would like their horoscope for. So let's just, let me expand some of this stuff. We have more space to look around. So it prints out, do you want your horoscope for the day, tomorrow, yesterday? I will say today. And then that'll print out, please select the following sign. I'll say Gemini. And then finally, that'll fetch the sign for uh, what I, what I praise today. Yeah, so we got today. So that's pretty awesome, right? It was pretty easy to get all this running. And that is pretty much the gist of this little application, this little tutorial. Now I will do one more thing and just kind of pull out this request line to another file because this is not the cleanest code to keep copying, pasting those URLs and having uh, your request logic kind of embedded on your main. So I'm going to make a new file called api.py and I'm going to go ahead and just import requests here Let's just comment that out for now and this api method or module is going to export two methods so I'm going to say def get uh, signs could be one so it's a method which basically just does that request and I could have another Let's see, another method called get horoscope. And then that could be a sign and then a time frame. Okay. So bear with me, I'm just doing some refactoring. It's always good to refactor code if you see things that could be improved upon. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Paste that in, change that to sign, time frame, time frame, JSON. Okay. So now we have a file that has two methods we can use 
to get our signs and to get our horoscope. So we can actually go back to our main file and instead of having to import requests here, we could say from API import get signs and get horoscope. And then we can just call them here instead of having to hard code that URL and all that stuff. So I'll say select the sign and time frame. <clears throat> all right, so fingers crossed. Did we make any mistakes? Select your horoscope for today. It printed out all the signs. Leo, it printed out a horoscope. So it's still working um, and it's a little bit cleaner. And I'll explain why this is cleaner, right? So let's say in the future, you decide that you don't want to use a library request. You find a better library or there's like one included in the Python standard lib, which you think is better. If you have a large application and you are importing requests all over the place, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to refactor that versus if you put most of your API requests kind of consolidated in a file and you only import requests one place, it makes it really easy to just refactor this one file and your your kind of uh, application code doesn't have to change, right? It still just calls git signs, it still just calls git horoscopes, but the implementation detail behind the scenes doesn't have to change. You're still just making a request to an API using whatever library you want and main doesn't have to care about that. The last thing I'll do, because I do see another thing I can refactor, is I'm going to define a base URL. Just for whatever reason, let's say you wanted to mock out where you're making these requests to, um, because obviously if you're testing locally, these people are probably going to lock you out after you make so many requests. So what you can do instead is define a base URL up here, and I'm going to just format it here instead of having to copy and paste that hard-coded string everywhere. And this will clean up code and you could also kind of change this based on if you're running locally or running on your production environment, etc. cetera. Uh, but that's probably a, a, a tutorial for another day. So let's just run it one last time um, just to make sure I didn't screw anything up. We'll probably have tests over this to make sure I don't have to keep rerunning this stuff. Yeah, so that is it. I mean, if you have any any suggestions of how I can improve this code, be sure to let me know. I am still pretty new at Python. I usually use JavaScript um, at my day-to-day -day job. So Python is not my go-to language, but I'm, I really enjoy using it. It's really elegant. It's clean. I'm tired of using JavaScript. I'm just getting getting bored of it, or I don't know. I need, I need something new. So I've been playing around with Python a little bit. I find it fun to use, and I'm sure you all do as well. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can kind of mention about this. Of course, my code's always posted to my YouTube GitHub repo, which is in the description of the video. Be sure to subscribe and like if you thought this was a good tutorial or if you want to see more like this. And be sure to leave me suggestions. I'm always open to new suggestions on videos I can make for you all. These videos are for you, not for me. I'm just trying to expand your knowledge, make you more knowledgeable of programming, of Python, of software engineering, etc. So... Sometimes I run out of ideas of what to make, so I'm kind of just making whatever I find online that people suggest. Anyway, thanks again. This is Web Dev Junkie. I'm Cody Seibert. Thanks for watching.